Hi, welcome to the Signal Path. This is most likely going to be another short episode because I'm working on a big review. And as I mentioned before, short episodes are not charged to the Patreon account. Now, the reason I'm making this is because a lot of you guys asked, well, you know, it's nice to repair really expensive high-end instrument, but how about repairing something that's within the reach of an average uh, YouTube viewer? And that's fine, of course. So I went around looking for something simple to return, uh, to repair, and I found this. This is a BK Precision. LCR meter, it's a 879B. It's a pretty popular unit, I think, and it's a very nice one based on what I've seen other people talk about and, and tear down and so on. So I thought we'll fix this one, and this one is totally broken, doesn't turn on at all, uh, regardless of whether it's powered with a battery or external power AC cord, it just doesn't work at all. Now I thought this would be an interesting thing to try and repair. I don't know if it's repairable or not. I paid $50, $50 for it, uh, which I guess it's a little bit high, but it's not. Uh, that expensive, I think, and um, I think it's worth about maybe $250, $300 or something like that, so it's not uh, anyway that expensive even uh, if it was new. But anyway, I thought maybe we'll take a look and see if we can fix it. Since it doesn't turn on at all, maybe we should just go straight to taking it apart and looking at the PCB and see if we can find what's wrong with it. Alright, went ahead and took all the screws out. Let's take a look and see what's going on. And oh, it's upside down. And there it is, it looks quite nice, nice PCB construction, uh, nothing out of the ordinary right off the bat, and there's an Altera Max FPGA here, and if I remember correctly, Max FPGAs are flash based, uh, I have to double check, it may not be. Uh, but either way, very nice clean construction here, you can see the AC power going in there, these are the terminals for the battery, and uh, these are the test ports of course, and this little spring here connects directly to the shield at the back, and this shield is for EMI, EMI protection. And this is important not just for signals getting in, but also for signals getting out, because remember these LCR meters put a signal on this test ports, that's how it measures capacitance and inductance and so on, so you want to really be, protect everything from interference. And actually, if you notice, let me check this out. That is not a good thing. It almost looks burnt. Let's do a smell test. Oh yeah, that smells like uh, smoke for sure. So something has gone wrong there. And let me see, where does that line up? That lines up, yeah, it lines up right here, right in this area. I don't see anything yet. No, wait a second, no, I do see something. I don't know if you can see it or not. Interesting, look at that. See that component right there? That doesn't look very healthy. It looks like a transistor. It's labeled Q, and it's very close to this which is the, is that a positive or a negative? That's the negative terminal of the battery. But uh, it's really close proximity. In fact, I see a trace on this side. You can see the green trace there connected here. So yeah, I think that does line up with that. So it looks like something has definitely gone wrong there. It might be worthwhile to look at this under the microscope and see what's going on. I've taken, let me see, can we take this out? How is this constructed? Show me your secrets. I think I need a tool to get this out. Oh no, never mind, I just did. There we go. Now uh, this is supposed to be completely new. I mean, it still even has the, yeah, I think it does. Yeah, see, it still has the <laughs> the protective uh, plastic on it. So it, it's really brand new as far as it is concerned. I'm surprised, I wonder how it has actually been damaged. I wonder, or maybe just somebody never took this off. Uh, anyway, it came with all of its accessories and everything. And there's a keypad. So there's our uh, nice PCB there. You can clearly see, obviously, the LCD screen is a single module there. And uh, the keys are there, and there's a little buzzer there. Looks very clean, and there's a USB port on this side. Some trimmer for some adjustment, obviously. But it looks pretty good, so uh, something's going on over there, and I suggest perhaps looking at it under the microscope before we go forward. Now, you know, you may not get lucky. You may open one of these and not have a clear indication, a nice place to start. But this may be a symptom of a much bigger problem. And uh, remember, sometimes inexpensive things like this may just be not economical to fix at all. If it's you know, too complicated, something major is broken, you can't go and replace everything. Eventually, it's just easier to buy another one. But anyway, let's go and take a look and see what we can find. All right, let's take a look. So I put it in the microscope. And again, I apologize for filming the screen. It's going to be fairly quick. But uh, take a look. It's very clear that something has gone horribly wrong. And this and this component over here is now uh, been totally destroyed. Now you can kind of follow the trace and get an idea of what this is. Now I have no schematic, of course, but it doesn't stop us. Uh, it's never stopped us before. So if you look over here, this trace that's coming from here, now this trace is actually the positive of the battery. So this 
positive trace of the battery comes down here and then goes into these two transistors this one and this one and you can see that it goes into this middle pin of this SOT23 package and then the other side of that goes into yet another SOT23 package and then the output of that is taken over here to this capacitor we'll follow that in a second now based on the proximity of these four devices here to the battery terminal as well as to the AC line in which is this component right here I would suspect that this is the soft start so this is the portion of the circuit responsible for turning the device on and off with the push of a button because remember this has a soft start it doesn't have a hard switch so it needs some transistors in, in some configuration so they turn it on and off and there are plenty of example circuits of this available now unfortunately I don't know if I can read the part number of this but this is DD A2M on it and uh, I couldn't find any information about what this is now I can venture a guess Now, obviously, the best place to replace this component is going to be, you know, obviously, the Mantis. But uh, I have another thing I want to try out, something that Banggood sent me, and actually, I was quite impressed with it. So let me show you what it is after we do some measurement. And here is the data sheet of the synchronous step-down converter, the buck converter responsible for regulating the 9-volt battery input as well as the external power that's coming into the unit to a reusable voltage within the instrument itself and it has a very classic set of specification you can see that it has an operating input voltage of 3.1 to 17 volt so it can really discharge the heck out of that 9 volt battery no problem 1.4 megahertz reasonably fast clock there and it's rated up to 1.5 amp I'm sure this instrument doesn't use that much current but uh, it's pretty interesting to see that uh, something like this would fail without uh, any direct cause that I can tell right away of what that might have been but either way uh, this has failed um, um, at least based on the color that I see on it but we're gonna still have to measure it just to make sure and uh, you can see the little schematic application schematic here so we have the input coming here and on the other side with the SW the switching port would be you can see a 6.8 micro Henry inductor in this example for a 3.3 volt output there and uh, there on the other side of the inductor is where our output is so we can measure from here and make sure that that you know that node has a proper resistance to ground and so on and it shouldn't for example be shorter uh, to the ground otherwise you, obviously there's a problem so we can take a look and see what's going on with that and we'll check it and if I look at the pin out there uh, there it is you can see clearly what we're dealing with the input is on one side the switching port is on the other side so we can easily find out what's going on and in, in fact if I look at the traces there over here I can clearly see you know the input is over here the inductor is there so that's the output so the inductor port at that side is going to be our output voltage and that makes sense if I follow that I can see that that goes to another capacitor this capacitor there for decoupling so it's very consistent we can easily find out if there's a problem there let's go ahead and do a quick measurement and see what's going on with it all right let's try to do a measurement there so I'm gonna use the negative battery terminal as our ground there make sure make a good contact and we're going to use the inductor there. Let's see, what do we have here? And there we go. Yeah, that's, a, that's a short circuit. So the output of this, which would be the output of this DC converter, that this is capacitor here, is shorter. So I cross this capacitor, we have a short. So that means that this component is most likely dead. And that confirms the, the color. Now, I'm, because of the discoloration, obviously there are some other components there. Maybe that's causing the the short I'm not 100% sure maybe something else is damaged but just because of this coloration is worth changing it this, this is a one dollar or two dollar part anyway it's not a big deal and I, I, I went ahead and I ordered it so anyway so let's go ahead and change it and these uh, uh, we're gonna also remove those so let me show you what I got from Banggood which is uh, pretty nice and since this is going to be an inexpensive repair let's use something inexpensive to fix it and this is what I wanted to show you from Banggood. I got this and one other thing and I'm keeping that one a secret for now because I'm building a little experiment which I think you're going to enjoy. Now this is a soldering uh, iron stand and it has a whole bunch of functionalities built into it and I actually replaced my little Weller soldering iron stand with this one after I started using it because it has some nice features which I think you'd like. Obviously the soldering iron goes over there and it has these multifunctional arms which have these alligator clips on them for holding various things wires PCBs and so on so you can move them around and examine them and solder to them and so on so it's like a little helping hand there a little area over here for your sponge 
uh, whether it's you know a metal one or whether you're using water and regular sponge there and the magnifying glass can move out of the way and the center has got this little vice thing which is adjustable for very small components that you can place there and help you solder and this happens to be right in the focal length of this uh, magnifying glass which is nice it gives you a fairly good distance I would say maybe about uh, three or four inches there and you gotta be a little bit careful of course because it's plastic so you know if your soldering iron touches this and you leave it on there for a while it will melt that so you gotta be a, a bit cautious there uh, but uh, this is pretty nice you can take this off you don't, if you don't want to use it and this has a fairly good uh, multiple degrees of freedom of course because of the way these are attached these are all removable you can remove them uh, this arm can move back and forth by loosening this screw over there you can move it forward and down like this and it's got these little discrete steps which locks into place so I'm actually quite uh, happy with the way it's constructed it's reason reasonably well built and uh, one of the other things that's neat about it is the fact that the magnifying glass is probably my favorite feature it's got LEDs built into it so if you connect it to a USB port you can actually light up the area that you're working on so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to connect it to my Nokia Bell Labs little portable power bank there and plug it in there and turn it on Ta-da! Take a look. It's pretty good. If you're working in this area right underneath the magnifying glass, it's perfect because the biggest complaint I have about it is that this guy cannot move this way. It can move like that a little bit. It has two degrees of freedom, I guess, but it can't really be pulled out further. So if you're like this and you want to work here, let's say, with this PCB, well, you're not going to be able to use a magnifying glass because it's just not in the field of view. But if you're working here in the center, then it's perfect uh, and you can easily use the magnifying glass. It's got the two levels of magnification there. So I'm pretty happy, but the light alone is, is a huge, huge uh, advantage when you're working on, on small things. And this is a $17 or $18, so you know, it's a reasonably priced. And uh, I like it, I'm pretty happy with it. I, like I said, I replaced my Weller one with it. So you can go ahead and try that. I'm gonna provide a link for you to take a look at and see if it's uh, something that you would like to buy. I get no money, no nothing from it. It's just a direct link to Banggood. It's not traced, it's not an advertisement. This is just something that I thought I'd give a bit of an exposure and let you decide whether it would uh, suit your needs. If this uh, moved forward a little bit more and you could work here, then it'd be perfect. But unfortunately, uh, it doesn't. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to actually have to use my uh, hot air to remove these components. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to bore you with the details of doing that. That's pretty straightforward. Let's remove this and then hook it up to a power supply and see if we can uh, get this guy uh, to not draw any you know, harsh amount of current and then we'll replace them one at a time. Here we go. And the components have been removed. You can clearly see the three spots where the various components used to be. Very easy to remove with the Hot air, no problem at all. So now let's go connect it to the power supply and see it should draw no current at all because technically it shouldn't be connected to anything. So that's a really quick test we can do. Actually, it just occurred to me, let's just try doing the, the resistance test. Um, that's probably much easier to do. If you remember that we had a short across this uh, capacitor before and now we have, what do we have now? Make sure we're making good contacts. Oops, that's the ground. That's supposed to be a short. And on the other side, no, nope, 547 ohms, perfect. So the short did in fact completely go away and these probes which I just bought from eBay, they suck. Anyway, having said that, um, this is good. That means that that short condition has been removed so there's no reason to power it on. I can go ahead and directly replace that DC-DC converter and uh, let's just go all out and put everything in and see what happens then. Ah, there's no reason to take it step by step. And there we have it, I went and replaced these components. Now, earlier in the video, I actually gave some clues on what these could be based on some observations. And I decided to go ahead and take that out of the video to leave it as a puzzle for you guys so we can discuss it in the comment section. And I'm sure within 10 minutes, someone's going to say exactly how this circuit works. And in the extremely unlikely event that that wouldn't be the case, then I'll just post what's going on. But I'm sure you guys will figure it out very quickly. It will be interesting to see what you guys have to say. So I replaced the you see the converter and these little transistors here. So let's go ahead and put it back in the case and see what happens. All right, let's see what we got here. I put it back together, gave it a little battery. Let's see what's going on. What? Oh, there we go. There it is. Check it out. Not bad. Comes back to life. Backlight. Look at that. That's pretty good. 
it's reading zero picofarad, and I'm not sure if it's uh, reading capacitance or inductance correctly yet, but it seems to be uh, functioning, at least it turns on, which of course it didn't do before, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty nice, I'm happy with the fact that it's coming back, but let's do a quick test to see uh, if it's actually functional. Now before I put a capacitor in there, let's measure the capacitor that I want to measure with this, with some uh, much better instrument than this, and so we can have a reference idea, and then we can compare it to this one. Well, what better way to measure our reference capacitor, which is uh, this guy, uh, than using the HP4263B, uh, which is my default uh, LCR meter here in the lab. So let's go ahead and plug that in. I've already kind of roughly zeroed that out, but uh, here we go. So we're looking at a 45.7, 45.76 nanofarads there at a frequency of 1 kilohertz. On the level there is about 500 millivolt, which is uh, fairly reasonable. So now we can go ahead and compare that, so 45.7 uh, to what um, this guy will give us. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Let me turn this on just in case. Let me zoom out a little bit here so we can see what we're doing. And let's go ahead and plug this in here and see what happens. There we go. And 45.76, which is exactly what we had from the other instrument. So it's very accurate and don't see any problem with the calibration, at least on the capacitance here. So I'm pretty happy with the the result of that and I think it's a good repair and certainly this unit is worth the 50 bucks plus a couple of dollars or whatever for uh, the parts that I spend on definitely worth the repair and uh, so it's an example of you know a, a very simple repair here that you know you could attempt yourself there's also one other little thing I wanted to show you which is unrelated but I think it's pretty cool so my girlfriend painted something for the lab and check it out if you are a huge fan of this as I am you would certainly recognize this is the painting that Captain Picard has in his uh, office or his uh, room on the Enterprise. So that's pretty awesome. It's a uh, kind of acrylic oil painting combination. So now that the lab has a legacy of the Star Trek Enterprise on it, which I'm pretty happy about. And there we have it. So I wanted to make a little quick video before I get back to reviewing. I'm actually reviewing this thing over here. So I'm going to let you guess on what it is. I'm designing the experiments for it and so on so you can get an idea of how much work it is to create uh, one of those reviews so it's going to be a while before I'm done but I'm hoping to finish it this weekend and show you this is a really really nice instrument so uh, and until then if you like it again discuss with the component that I replaced right there in the comment section and I'm not charging the short videos to Patreon like I said I kind of feel bad which is why I've been making a lot of short videos recently but if you like it let me know and I'll see you soon